Is a single PC good enough for gaming and streaming in 2024? I think so. This is SJ the Sauce Guide, and today in this video, we'll be going through my personal PC gaming and streaming setup, my single PC gaming and streaming setup, and why I think that it is more viable in 2024 than ever to get started streaming, especially on Twitch. Let's start with the powerhouse that makes this possible, my PC. I built my PC one and a half years ago and have been using this as I configured it since. It is powered by an i5 12600K processor and an RTX 3070 Ti graphics card. For RAM, I run two Corsair 3600 16GB DDR4 sticks for 32GB of total memory. And I'll put the rest of the, the PC build here on the screen. And of course, I'll have the links in the description below. I did want to also mention my monitors. I use my primary monitor, which is a Samsung G7 27 inch featuring a 1440p resolution with 240 hertz of refresh rate. And speaking of the refresh rate, I will state right off the jump that I do not get the full 240 hertz from my PC when I'm playing Warzone. I will average about 140 to 160 frames when I'm streaming and that number will jump as high as 190 frames when I'm not streaming. I do have two additional monitors, an LG monitor with a 1440p resolution, which I primarily use for music and discord. And it has a 144 Hertz refresh rate and a Dell 1080p with 120 Hertz refresh rate, which I use for monitoring OBS. I also use the Elgato teleprompter, which is attached to my camera. I'm actually using it right now to film this video maintain this beautiful eye contact with you guys while streaming i use the teleprompter and i have the chat pulled up into the teleprompter to allow me to read the chat messages as i appear while looking directly at the camera and speaking of my camera let's discuss the video components that make this stream a reality my camera itself is a sony a6100 with a 16 millimeter lens and for those of you into photo and videography, this is an APS-C camera with a full frame focal length equivalent of 24 millimeters. The camera is plugged into the Elgato CamLink 4K capture card, which is plugged straight into my PC. The lighting in the room is powered by nine Philips Hue lights and the Elgato key light as my main key light linked to an application called Lumia Stream. The app allows for my chat to come in and control the lights in my room using simple commands or channel point redemptions. I can make a whole video on this app. It is very, so very, guard. very good. Moving into audio, my microphone is the Shure MV7. I bought this microphone because I could not justify buying the SM7B, which is a price point of $400 and the price of $250 was a little bit more palatable for this mic. This wasn't the first mic that I started using though. I did use the Blue Snowball at a price point of I believe around $60. That's a simple plug and play microphone and that one was pretty good up until I upgraded to this one. However, I will continue to use this microphone for some time, but I am potentially eyeballing the new SM7DB microphone, which has entered the market but it does have a staggering price point of $500. I have no complaints about this current microphone. It is absolutely great and it's plugged into my Go XLR, TC Helicon's Go XLR Mini. The audio interface and the associated software for this Go XLR are my absolute favorite of this setup. The Go XLR software has been calibrated to provide the best audio that you guys are hearing right now for this microphone and the Go XLR software is always running on my PC. It is one of the startup apps for when I turn my PC on. The device itself has allowed me to have the audio controls at my fingertips. The first fader is for the control of my mic volume. I almost never adjust this mic fader. The volumes are adjusting as I'm speaking, and that one I just keep all the way up to the top. 
I will use the mute button that's located underneath the first fader to allow myself to mute myself to my teammates and in game voice chat and still maintain communication to stream. The second fader I use for game audio, the third fader I use for music, and the fourth and final fader I use for voice chat. These ones will be adjusted accordingly depending on what the need is for stream, if my teammates are too loud or if I need to adjust the game volume. My most adjusted one is my music because I'll have different levels of music for when I hop into stream and when I'm closing out a stream or, or midway through stream. I am saddened to hear that this GoXLR app will no longer receive the software updates from TC Helicon and essentially this device will become a brick and I am potentially in the market for looking for a new audio interface as this will go out of business and be unusable in the near future when I'm not sure but I do want to be a little bit more proactive about finding the replacement. I don't know what that replacement will be. I have been eyeing the Rodecaster Pro 2, which is kind of an overkill considering I only use one mic right now, but I want the opportunity to use multiple mics in the future if there's a need for it. Going back to the GoXLR plugged into it is this headset, the HyperX Cloud Alpha S. This has been an exceptional headset. I have absolutely no complaints about it. I bought it at around an $80 price point and I just checked Amazon. I saw it's listed for $70 right now. I have absolutely nothing bad to say about this headset. It has been great. However, I am becoming increasingly aware of the dent that prolonged and repeated use of these over ear headsets have given numerous streamers. I am in the market for potentially buying some in ear monitors that I'll use to prevent that dent. If I were to take this headset off, you'll see a dent in my hair. Moving to my macros, the Elgato Stream Deck has become a permanent fixture on my desk. However, I have fallen into the group of people who primarily use this for switching scenes. I do still enjoy using the soundboard. I have curated on it, but mostly it's just for switching scenes like this. In the same vein as a stream deck, I do utilize the Elgato foot pedal for three purposes. The left pedal is used for zooming in and out of my face, primarily as a surprise when I'm streaming. So that'll look something like this. Usually the gameplay will be pictured around here and then I'll zoom in for a shock factor and then zoom back out. The middle pedal is binded to the space bar, which is my push to talk button. And the right pedal is binded to muting myself in Discord. So again, similar to the GoXLR button, it allows me to mute myself to my teammates, but still maintain conversation with stream. The final accessory that I wanted to just quickly discuss is my controller. And I know I've made several videos about this controller, but it has enhanced my streaming and I would be remiss if I didn't mention it. The controller is the Scuf Envision Pro. The unique thing about this controller is that there's five G buttons that are here on the bottom. And as a streamer, macros are, are second to none. I only use three of the G buttons that are here. The first one I have set to deafening in Discord. That one is so that I can lock in when I get into the Gulag and just make sure that I don't hear my teammates. I'm not talking to anyone and, and I can just, you know, focus on what needs to be done. The second G button, which is actually the middle one. I don't have anything set to the second one. The second G button I have binded. The middle one is for push to talk, similar to my foot pedal. And then the third one is for pausing and playing music. All in all, I generally have OBS, Call of Duty, Discord, Lumia Stream, the GoXLR app, Voice Mod, IQ, and Google Chrome running on my PC at the same time while I'm streaming. My PC is able to support all of these applications with the assistance of the several accessories that I've just mentioned. And am I looking to build a second PC? Potentially. I would love to have the increased performance, get a higher frames. I'm, I'm kind of capped out right now, but I will say that I have been streaming like this for over a year and a half now with my PC and I have absolutely loved it. A single PC setup is still viable in 2024. If there's anything else that we didn't touch on that you guys are interested in hearing about, 
feel free to let me know in the comments below if you did enjoy this video leave a like and consider subscribing i hope you guys enjoyed thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next one i hope that came out good